Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be going over my favorite antiseptics for wound cleaning. So these are for fresh cut um, wounds that may be contaminated and you want to clean it out so there isn't any infection. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, well, let's use peroxide or rubbing alcohol, but we are not going to be talking about either of those today. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button already, please smash the subscribe button and let's get started. So Topical antiseptics are really great for wounds, okay? Because we don't always want to be just starting somebody on an antibiotic when there's signs of infection. That's why we always use our nerds and stonies to see what type of infection they have. Is it a local? Is it a deep spreading infection? Now for deep spreading infections, you have no choice. You need an antibiotic but for just a local infection, antiseptics are like absolutely perfect to use because they just, they penetrate about three millimeters deep. That's all that's needed for a local infection. Okay, so this limits the potential of antibiotic resistance because we all know we try to use antibiotics as least as possible, okay? It's honestly much better for our health just using a topical um, antiseptic, okay? Because antibiotics, they do affect the gut flora and can cause other issues too. So when we first get a wound, we want to clean it out. Now, soap and water are normally a perfect um like are, are, are more than enough to use, okay? We don't really need any more. But if it's contaminated or you cut yourself with a knife that you just cut chicken with or meat with, if there's potential for infection, you have to think, okay, do I need something more, okay? We always want to think about that because, and, and choose the best possible antiseptic, okay? If we can just clean it out with soap and water, perfect, okay? we're always looking for the least tissue toxicity, okay? When it comes to antiseptics and cleaning wounds, the least tissue toxicity is the best because it has the less chances of disrupting that wound bed and slowing down healing. So my two favorite antiseptics, okay? First one that we're gonna talk about is povidone iodine, okay? This is low on the tissue toxicity scale, so it's not going to cause harm to the wound, okay? So it does not impede wound healing. It does not disrupt wound healing, okay? A lot of things will slow down wound healing, so we have to be very cautious with what we're using. Um, it's good against gram-positive and gram-negative organisms, um, there has been no bacterial resistance um, noted for povidone iodine, okay? So povidone iodine, it is a little bit different than iodine. So it's only a 10% solution, okay? So it doesn't have the stinging effect that iodine has. So you can, when you go to use this, especially on a, a younger child, you you don't want to be hurting them whatsoever. So by using povidone iodine, you know you're not going to have that stinging effect, okay? Um, it also aids in healing, okay? So it can aid in acute and chronic wounds. So with chronic wounds, there is a high percentage that have an overgrowth of bacteria on the wound bed, okay? So a high bio burden, um, we want to disrupt this, okay? So by using povidone iodine, even on chronic wounds, it is good for that. Um, but once again, we're talking about just acute wounds, just happen, what we're using, povidone iodine is great. Now we do need to be cautious. Um, people with shellfish allergies, you do not want to be using povidone iodine or if they have a sensitivity to iodine. 
Um, and then also for prolonged use, we would not want to be using this for people with thyroid disorders or who are on lithium therapy. So next we have chlorhexidine solution. So this is a 0.5% solution. Um, it honestly has a lot of the same thing going on that povidone iodine did. So once again, we do not want to be using antibiotics if we don't have to. We just want to clean out that dirty wound, okay? So once again, it's a topical antiseptic that may have the potential to reduce antibiotic resistance, okay, by just using this. Um, it does not impede wound healing. It's good for gram positive and gram negative. Um, and it, once again, aids in healing. Contra um, contraindications, we don't want to be using this under the age of two months. Um, and then just caution, if you use this and you have blistering, burning, itching, peeling, skin rash, redness, or swelling, okay, those are the signs um, that you might have an allergy. Chlorhexidine, it hasn't been used as much as other products. Um, so I just wanted to add that in there, that if you are having any of those, it might be time to move over to the iodine or vice versa. If you're having an allergy to the iodine, switch over to the chlorhexidine. So what I really want you to take away from this video is that there are better options to choose when you're trying to clean out a new fresh wound, okay? Soap and water, saline are, are, are really at the top, but if you need an antiseptic because that wound has been contaminated or you believe it might be at risk for infection, choose a low toxicity wound antiseptic, okay? Povidone iodine, it's very readily available at really any like shop or drug mart, um, any drugstore, pharmacy, you can get povidone iodine or chlorhexidine, okay? Those are what I keep in my first aid kit and I hope that they now join yours. That's all I have for this video, guys. Have a wonderful day and hope to see you in my next video.